Robert rolled out of the way and he stomped right on his partner. And referee Bill Mack off the top rope comes uh, John Gray. John Gray at the five minute mark comes off the top rope and lands right astride Robert Fuller and he's in trouble now. Yeah. A quick reversal. Great jackknife. But everybody's in the ring now. Buddy Fuller comes in. He's working on John Gray and leaving the Barnes and Dundee team to his boys. Dundee flattens Robert with one. While Ron catches Barnes and Buddy is doing his part. He and Gray are really going at it in there. Buddy holds on to John Gray while Ron comes over and George Barnes attacks him from behind. Buddy, a wicked right. Puts George on the floor, and now Buddy goes after Bill Dundee. Referee is going to have to stop this one. There's been six men in the ring for the last minute and a half or better. It may not all be legal, but the crowd is really getting a kick out of it. The Fullers. Buddy tangling with John Gray, Robert with George Barnes, and Ron over on Bill Dundee. The only tagging part in this bout is how the six guys are tagging each other. Woo, yeah. Barnes and Dundee made some comments about what an old man Buddy was, well, I can tell you, they just saw a pretty good move from, from an old man. Dundee hammered down on the floor by Buddy. Gray looks like his head is messed up pretty good. But here comes Dundee. Bill Mack counts one, two, three. He did. And the Fullers, all three of them come out victorious. And there are a couple of happy boys and one happy father. The first time that we have seen George Barnes and Bill Dundee lose any kind of a match in here. Dundee storms over to the edge of the ring. George Barnes still on his knees. And John Gray with his face crimson. And the Australians did not fare too well. And the catch is catch can freestyle wrestling that the Fullers laid on them tonight. The official decision in 10 minutes and 15 seconds to Ron and Robert Fuller with a great assist from the father. They defeat Barnes and Dundee and George Barnes is having a fit in the center of that ring. We're set ready to go as the fabulous Fargos, Jackie and Ruffhouse, come walking in to a jam-packed 11,500 people in the Coliseum. And there's the Ruffhouse. He's on the floor. He's got his track shoes on. William Colt, the valet, preceding his brother, and he almost got run over. Rough nails Colt down on the floor. Dundee in and out of the ring. And as usual, when Rough House is around, it's pandemonium. Jackie trying to slow him down. 
Referee Paul Morton tells Jackie he better get him back up in that ring. The bell hadn't sounded is one thing that saved him at this point. And Dundee is draped over the table by Rough House. Completely unorthodox, wild, and woolly type fella, I want to tell you, is this Rough House Fargo. Jackie gets him with a tackle, nails him from behind, and slows him down in the center of the ring. We hadn't even really started it yet, and old Rough House has already run him out of the ring four times. Dundee says that's all for him. He's gone. Coles and Dundee head back towards the dressing room as the crowd starts booing. Referee Paul Martin looks like he might like to join them, but he knows doggone well he's got to get back up in that ring and get them back in the ring or disqualify him and get it all over with right now. Jackie is holding Rough House back in the corner at the present time. Never claimed to be much strong on that scientific wrestling, but boy, I'll tell you, that Rough House will stir it up like a tornado. And referee Paul Martin cautiously climbs to the ring. He didn't want to get caught in a wild and woolly swing. There's the introductions from down at ringside as uh, Rough House gets loose and comes after Bill Dundee. When Rough House is in the ring, you don't you don't very often jump up there and do your announcing from the ring, or at least you don't stay there.